a gamer here, and Ratchet and Clank was one of my childhood games, and actually one of my favorite game franchises of all time. So when I heard that they're making a movie based off the original game, and then a game based off the movie, I had to check out the game. So does it pay homage to the original game, or does it do its own little thing, or does it fall into the category of bad t movie tie-in games? Well, let's find out. Touch my First, I want to start off by saying that the graphics in these games are phenomenal. Next-gen graphics, hands down. I mean, the lighting effects, the physics, the particle effects, the the amount of things that could be happening on screen. I mean, you can even see the little hair, hair strands on Ratchet's face when you zoom in. Best looking game on the PS4 to date. Quote me on that. But what's a good looking game without at least a good gameplay and good story? So what is the story in this game exactly? Well, it's not a copy and paste of the original game. It's more of a reimagining, retelling of the first through Quark. Now, the story still revolves around that the Blarg basically destroyed their own planet and Superior Chairman Drek is going around collecting bits and pieces of different planets to, to assemble and make a new home for them. So where the original focused mainly on Ratchet and Clank going to planet to planet and trying to prevent the destruction of that planet while still trying to figure out how to stop Chairman Drek from building his ultimate planet and destroying several others in the process, this one mainly focuses on Ratchet and Clank, the characterization, and basically the Q-Force, or as they call them, Galactic Rangers, which I can't name any except Bex, I think that was the name. Now, I feel that the story didn't really flow that well as you go planet to planet basically because that's the only planet you have available and you're just told to go there to get something or do something. Rather, in the first original game, you actually had a reason to go there, to stop the destruction of that planet for whatever reason Chairman Drake was on that planet. I mean, the story just feels rushed. There's no good characterization. Ratchet doesn't really build any friendships with the Galactic Rangers. I can only remember one of them, Bex, I think. The other two, I don't remember what they do or what they're even called. There's no interaction between the characters other than a couple of movie scenes, and actually the cutscenes are direct cuts from the actual movie rather than custom-made in-game graphics cutscenes. But the thing is, they do it, they stitch those two aspects, the game and the movie, so poorly that you, it just doesn't flow well. The movie cutscenes feel poorly edited. They're either cut abruptly or they're cut so poorly that you can actually tell where the cut was made. It just jumps between scene to scene and you feel like you're either missing something or you didn't get the entire story. Now there are good parts of the story. There is a good bit, bit of comedy there and the original worlds from the original game, there are plenty of them in here and you can actually revisit them and basically it's beautifully recreated step by step and it's exact replica and it's just it might be the nostalgia but that got me very happy now what about the actual weapons ratchet and clank was basically known for its creative weapons its variety of weapons its amount of weapons and the upgrades you can do to them now they added something new that every single weapon sort of has an upgrade skill tree of some sort you upgrade your weapons by using rare titanium and you get rare titanium by killing enemies and rare titanium really isn't that hard to get, it's actually rather common, so you'll be upgrading your weapons very often. And on top of upgrading your weapon, you can actually still level it up and increase a stat boost in that weapon and unlock more of that upgrade tree. So leveling up your weapons and upgrading them actually feels rewarding. You get rare titanium from enemies, you use that to upgrade your tree, you level them up, unlock more of it, and it just makes your weapon feel badass at the end. It's really fun. Now they also added a little card type system mechanic, sort of like a collectible card game. Once in a while, once you kill an enemy or just randomly going throughout the world, you're gonna find some sort of card. Get three in a set and you get a small boost to a stat. Now, there's nothing wrong with it, I mean, it's decent. There's also the standard uh, gold, hidden gold, giant gold bolts, uh, titan bolts, whatever you want to call them, that are hidden around the level that you can go and find. And these gold bolts are going to be basically your special currency, I guess you could say, for unlocking cheats, unlocking head skins, and just art galleries and all around. Now, I like these systems. They're fun, interesting, and creative, actually. But there's one thing that's rubbing me the wrong way. And that's the fact that they removed skill points from Ratchet and Clank. Why? Who, whose decision was it to remove skill points? Was someone out there yelling that they have to remove skill points because it's 
boring, a chore, not fun? I mean, I understand that the, the basic gold bolts are now replaced as the, the special currency to unlock cheats, but you could have done that with skill points. And, I mean, I mean, there's trophies that show like there was about to be skill points, but it feels like they just ran out of time. They didn't have enough time or something happened, and they either didn't finish skill points and left it for the trophies, but it's, come on, just put skill points, a little bonus of skill points, and a little fun little achievements and challenges to do while you're on a planet. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it, it, it was part of the first game, and it was really fun and really interesting, and it was just really nice to figure out what it meant. Uh, it, just, it just makes me sad that they just removed it. Now, with all said and done, my score for this game is still going to be an 8 out of 10. Now, with all of its flaws, with them, them removing skill points, which pissed me off the most, with the lackluster story, with its all small, nitpicky flaws, it's still an enjoyable game. It's still a great game to introduce newcomers. The story is still told generally as the original. Minor tweaks and changes, but it's generally the same story. The combat is fun. Updating weapons is fun. I mean, for people who've already played Ratchet & Clank, it's a blast of nostalgia you're just going to get a large enjoyment out of. Overall, the mistakes don't take away from the general fun of the game or the general experience. You're still going to have fun doing it, even with the small problems here and there. And at a $40 price point value at launch, this game deserves to be on your shelf either now or later, but definitely deserves to at least be part of your collection someday. And now, if you excuse me, I'm going to play challenge mode or game plus mode or whatever you want to call it.